Yeah. Really? Mm. That's what yum, Eve does. Yum, yum. <laughs> there you go. I'm just about to get hold of the... Uh... But it shouldn't be too hot. Nah, it's all right, yeah. We got, it, we got it in the old mess tins today. I've got a wonky tripod again, hold on. I think that's a bit more level. So punch that, there we go. I think maybe we can see now. Right, so we got some... What have we got? Uh, essentially pancetta, your favourite. <laughs> so the yeah. last the last pancetta at dish I did didn't agree with you too well, did it? Well, no. <laughs> It was it was it was spicy or what? It was a no, it was a breakfasty dish. It was like pancetta and apple and um, sweet potato and egg. But obviously, it's quite greasy pancetta, isn't it? So, I think you were saying it was repeating on you quite a bit. This is hot, yeah. It's repeating, 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 repeating on me. <laughs> it was coming out in all forms. <laughs> this is from every orifice. <laughs> I, no, it wasn't that. You bad, should have seen Dad's face when I when he said, "What are you cooking up today?" Then and I said, mm. "Pancetta." <laughs> So we have pancetta, another dish, but this time it's kind of Moroccan style spice. Too spicy. Yeah, with some chickpea, spinach, uh, chopped tomato. Yep. But really quick and easy dish for those wanting to know the recipe, I'll put it in the description below. Really what, quick and easy to do on the what grill. What is the spice in there that's about to uh, ignite my tonsils? Is there a particular one? Is it Everything. Uh, Probably is a bit it of the case. jalapeno, jalapeno, no. exploding a pino? What's that one? Um, jalapeno, no, there's no jalapeno. That's just the cayenne pepper. Probably as part of the spice mix. I imagine the lid fell off. <laughs> we got. It's not that. Bad. Is it quite hot? Good for me. See, that's that's perfect for me. But I guess like a curry, it's like a mild yeah, curry. Yeah, it? it is. Well, it's, yeah, it's that Moroccan style. So you say mild curry. Mild. Is this, is, would this come out of mild? <laughs> yeah, I'd say this would be mild. Yeah. Well, for you though, it might mm. be a bit. <laughs> Vindaloo style, but flavour wise it's lovely. Mm. I guess I'd, I'd adjust the cayenne pepper for next time for you. Yeah but everybody's different. Yeah that's the thing with spice. You don't want to adjust everything for me just because I haven't got a roll of paper. You know it's... <laughs> everybody's different, some people like really, I mean some people go out on a Saturday night regularly <laughs> and have what's the hottest curry? Vindaloo no. is it? Vindaloo is probably up there, yeah. I think it's hotter than that. But... How do they do it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. And are they right in saying when you do that, you should drink milk before you go out on one of those to line your stomach? <laughs> Some, I don't know. Um, I quite like a madras sort of level of spice, which is not mega spicy, but it's nice. That's probably my favourite level. What's your favourite level of spice, guys? Yeah. Um, that for me, yeah, madras level is actually enjoyable. You know, I, I have the odd vindaloo and I don't mind it, but. I prefer a madras, a bit more flavour. Anyway, we're going to crack on with this, yeah. and then we'll talk about what we've been doing. Uh, also, the grill I've been using, really pleased with it. Yeah, it's good. by TJM Metalworks, a British blacksmith. And you can see by the thickness of the bars, it's not warping at all. It's um, really good stainless steel. And um, I'm going to put a link in the description to him. He's a really good uh, UK kind of maker and creator of all things metal. Um, I've got a few bits from him that are really good that I'm enjoying using, and that's the first time I've used that, so I'm really pleased. Also, you can get a frying pan and uh, a kettle on there. Yeah, so we've, hand we've got the... two, a saucepan and a frying pan, can't you? No? Get two on there. Yeah, it's a big one. I think mm. there's a smaller version, but that's a big one. So you can get kettle, yeah, kettle and then frying pan next to it. We used them on the canoe trip. We used that. It's just good for communal cooking, but also a, a, a cast iron frying pan, 12 inch skin it, 13 inch skillet is big, so it takes up most of the grill, so it's nice to have space. And then we hang stuff from the Petromax. Um, fire bridge. Yeah, it's handy with the hooks, so you can slide it up and down. Yeah, so it's so, ideal. Like, I want, Mike has a coffee, I might want a cup of tea in an hour, I don't necessarily want it at the same time. Mm. So you can slide the kettle off the boil, and don't forget, you can't bring gallons and gallons of water with you. We come out with, what, two litres? Uh, two, three. Got three litres, so you can soon get through that doing stuff. Mm. We always keep a little bit back on the fire, even though it's got, you know, concrete and all that business. It's uh, always nice just to have a bit of water to back up to put fires out for safety. Yeah, exactly. So we'll finish this and we'll update you guys with what we're doing. I've been amusing myself with all the wood left over from your original big bushcraft tower build, the hunting tower build. And yeah. that's the truth. This is all that wood that we store around the back. I've made a... I'm going to call it a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what to call it. It's got here, so you can rock it, propel it, and hang on here. <laughs> put wheels on it. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the workshop. I figure yeah. when you want to break in a workshop, if you have small tree stumps, 
Then for me, being old, I've got to get right down. The old knees aren't great, so you go, oh, you can't get up. This, I've done to chair height, which is 18 inches. It's all lashed together. And I've used the Iron Age, which I've moved forward to the Iron Age. <laughs> You're away from bushcraft. Yes, and I've used nails together with traditional lashing of various fishing knots. <laughs> but it, this, again, is all wood that must be... Oh, what, so, yeah. Eight, five, six, uh, seven? Five, years? Probably five years probably old. Probably five years old. We we'll kept it dry. Beat around the back. Look, if it lasts... A couple of years I'm sure it will do I wouldn't want Dwayne Johnson sitting on it the rock would I know that's not good but yeah it's fine for me let's have a look yeah it's, it's good no problem yeah you got you've um, put some braces in at the bottom haven't you as well yeah just at the bottom yeah, yeah. Just hold it all together that's something different anyway and I've used all second hand scrap nails I use all the nails like we finished off that pallet cabin I've got some nails left over I just bend them you know they're fine they do the job and I lashed over the seat and it is what it is and it's due to go into here so the idea is to put it in the corner here or just any where generally you can even lash it up against the back there if you wanted and then you're tired out you're working i can sit back and relax and watch mike do all the work <laughs> that's the idea it just i don't want to be low down i don't want to be in this you know that's half the height this is 18 inch chair height job done oh, what did you think dad of the dish i like the chickpeas you know they're different aren't they i have to say my kidneys made a call to the fire department. <laughs> but, you know, less, less of that, was it cayenne? Cayenne pepper, you weren't a fan, were you? I don't yeah. eat a lot of spicy food. I'm real Billy basic on everything, you know, vegetables, you know, carrots, potatoes, yeah, spinach. You... I love spinach. Well, there was some spinach in that, but really? I think you're not a spicy person, are no, you? No, I'm so? not. Well, that's a very nice we'll thing to say. But... <laughs> we'll do something uh, stewy yeah. or something next time, like our kids. A, we'll do an English dish next time, a more traditional yeah. dish. Yeah. I, I just whittle together this spatula it's a bit uh it, well it's a bit naff to be honest but i was just um tinkering around with my the carving knife and the, the carving axe i've got because i haven't sort of used them lately and it's coming into that sort of time of year where it gets dark at four and in the winter months when i'm camping i quite like to just have a little lamp or lantern or head torch and just whittle away and carve away because there's not much to do after 4 p.m when it's dark well that you can do with the light under that workshop area now because yeah. that's, that's like waterproof yeah, we're really pleased with that. Yeah, and then we're going to use handy. that. We'll definitely use that more over the winter. We've got plans to possibly do one more, one more build. Maybe we reckon mm. in that sort of gap over there. But other than that, it's um, it's pretty much we're happy with the camp, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now's the time to enjoy it. What you yeah. want to do is get out there and enjoy it. At the moment, we've still got the ants, haven't we? Yeah, bugs are still out. I mean, we're September now, and we're going to have one more month probably. They're mm. going to start. We were saying how the bracken's just starting to die back now. Um, so we've got one more month of probably warmish weather and then it will start to drop, which is my favourite time of year, which is autumn, because the berries are out already, so they're, if you're interested in foraging pouches, by the way, got them on taoutdoors.com, and also the coffee I was drinking, Liquid Luna, that's now in stock again on the site, um, but we just got back from the Bushraft show, didn't we? Yeah, Dad? we did, yeah, yeah. What did you think of it? Well, I've only been on two, um, and this is the second one. Second took, show took, of the year. Took some gear up for Mike, yeah. Um, I found it interesting because I'm a fisherman, I'm not really a bush crafter, but we're all in the same boat in as much we all enjoy the outdoors. The camping people there, you know, it's like one big family really, yeah. it doesn't matter whether you're hunting, shooting, fishing, outdoors, whatever, you're, you're all outdoors. And I found a lot of people were pleased to at least get out in yeah. the open. After the year we've had. Yeah, a couple <laughs> of year and a half, it's been a shocker, hasn't it? Well, Mike was serving at his stall. <laughs> Dad was disappearing every five Dad, minutes. Dad, who's meant to be helping me on the stall, was three quarters of the time not there, just around the show enjoying it and filming, weren't you, with your camera? I go to the blacksmith's one. They say, where's Graham now? He's at the blacksmith. The phone's up the blacksmith. The blacksmith says, he's gone down to the Iron Age bloke now. <laughs> I couldn't help it because I find all that stuff interesting. It's, it's good, yeah. As you might find out. So what we're going to do is just roll some footage on of the bronze casting wasn't it so yeah, if you guys yeah. are interested in that kind of ancient craft yeah. uh, you know going back well before the sort of iron age into the bronze age uh, dad did some filming while i was on the stand so you guys could uh, get some of this this footage which is really interesting mm. and hopefully you enjoy it i'll just roll it on now and then we'll pop back here to the camp and uh, close out so i'm over here i'm here with dr james tilly and he could make all my fishing leads, as far as I'm concerned. I say I would confirm him as a master caster. That's what I'm going to call him. So, James, give us a run through on bronze casting. So, for the casting that I've been doing with people at the show here, they've been making a small Bronze Age actor from the early Bronze Age, which conveniently I have in my pocket here. 
Uh, this is an axe head that would have come from the Ariton phase of the Bronze Age about 4,000 years ago when Stonehenge fell into its final phases. But to get to that they have to make a mould and the moulds that we've been using today have been these sand moulds and I have half of one here. Now this has a steel frame with a natural sand interior that is the mould medium. In the Bronze Age they probably would have used a clay or a stone mould but for the workshop that only lasts two and a half hours to make a clay mould, dry it, fire it or carve stone would just simply be too long. So for the sand moulds they could be made within 10 minutes and are ready to go straight away. But the whole process to go from the moulding the bellowing to use the charcoal in the clay crucible to melt the bronze which is copper and tin for true bronze still takes a long process and it will give people here at the show an idea of perhaps one of the earliest tools of the bushcrafter the bronze axe so for the sand that I, I use, uh, it is just a very fine grain sand, which almost looks a bit like a food product really, but it is just very natural, finely naturally sorted sand with a tiny amount of mineral oil in it to help bond the grains together, because otherwise, of course, soft sand wouldn't be able to hold any kind of structure. And you can see from my mould, it has plenty of structure, I can shape it and move it around and it's, it's not going to come out um, so it's fairly stable and safe it's not going to spit or blow up in any way um, but for me to cast authentically I might use a bronze mould such as this one this is from a much later socketed axe that you can see with the loop on the side it's just one half and it would also need a a clay or metal socket uh, but to create even this bronze mold takes a lot of time and effort and this is based on examples found from around the UK but casting bronze into bronze might seem a bit counterintuitive a liquid metal going into the same metal with the mold not break well I'll be casting using this very mold later to see if I can make another one of these that you can see has come from this very mold and based on an axe example from Must Farm in Peterborough, which is a late Bronze Age site, an ashwood handle and bound with rawhide to keep it in place, which you can see is pretty taut. But these would have been some of the quite specialised woodworking tools of the Bronze Age, which, apart from the design, is not too much different from some of the axes and tools that we bushcrafters use today, but just as effective. So my furnace is a charcoal furnace, as you can see the charcoal's merrily burning away there, which would be exactly what they used in the Bronze Age. And charcoal is really perhaps one of the unsung hero resources of prehistory, because without that charcoal you're not going to get bronze casting. So for the furnace it needs to be around about 1200 degrees. Uh, I can measure the outside of the fuel around the crucible but not know the temperature inside the crucible itself where the metal is. So having a pyrometer and thermocouple gives me some idea of the temperature but to be honest because it's so rough the best guide is the glow of the coals the embers themselves and that's exactly how they would have done it in the bronze age and by taking off the lid of the crucible i can see if it's liquid enough for a bronze age furnace it probably would have been a pit in the ground lined with clay that would need several days of dry weather before you even used it but for this freestanding furnace uh, it's much safer and uh, if you accidentally catch your leg on it as you walk past it's absolutely cold and well in Insulated, but the process is exactly the same otherwise. And it sets pretty fast as opposed to say, well, I make my fishing nets. It, it sets in what, you say 10 seconds, 15 seconds? Well, yeah, the casting is where the pressure is, but uh, it's all done and over in a matter of seconds. Once the crucible's out, uh, you have to be very quick. Although the crucible will keep the metal liquid, as soon as it starts to come out the crucible, it will solidify in around 10 seconds or so. So it's a very rapid motion. You have to be confident in your pour, whereas something like lead that has a much lower melting temperature and uh, be much closer to an ambient room temperature will hold as a liquid for far longer. And I noticed on the uh, filming it that the, you can open the mould pretty rapidly really, it does go off really quickly. Yeah, it, it is solid 
well, within seconds, and uh, it's a case of when you want to open it, really, whether it's the first couple of seconds and the mould bursts into flames with the oil burning, or whether you're happy to wait, um, and uh, it'll just be uh, still quite hot and needs a, a good sizzling quench to and you can handle. You don't, you, don't uh, you, you say you don't quench it immediately. Straight in, you do it if graduation. it's still glowing red, um, you don't want to quench it too quickly because heat tension cracks can appear in the freshly cast object. And you certainly wouldn't want any cracks in something like an axe or hammer. So then it's just a question of filing a little edge to the uh, front of the blade. Yeah, filing, work hardening and even decorating uh, to make it a true example of an early Bronze Age axe head. Straight over. Oh, tilt, 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 tilt. Go, 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 go. Perfect, lovely, that loop. Across. That's it. Lean it on the edge. Tilt, 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 tilt. Keep going, keep going, keep going, go, go, go. That'll do. That was really interesting, and I, you were telling me as we were doing the fire earlier how hot that kind of crucible gets. Unbelievable. And it was just red, wasn't it? Orange. It comes out orange. Yeah, it's and awesome. obviously it's and it. Because I've done lead melting for fishing weights, I was amazed you have to move, as, as, as that as Dr. Tilly said, 10 seconds to get it in the it's pot. It's fast, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was, of course, I appreciate him letting us film that because he did have some clients because he does courses and, you know, they didn't mind me filming and getting, uh, I didn't get in there because it's too hot. <laughs> but you can see something different. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we do appreciate it. Uh, do subscribe to Dad's channel, TA Fishing. There's a link in the description. Oh, Jesus Christ, he went then. <laughs> and he's also got it on the t-shirt, the jumper obviously as well. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, we, we're going to pick up some theory time. Have you got any theory times? Do you remember anything to anything thought, that's been on your mind lately, Dad? That's uh, yeah. You've always I want to know. I want to know why since COVID, the lockdowns. You know, like 2021, 2020, all the way. I can't even remember which year. It 2020 was. mostly, wasn't it? The, the first one. No planes are flying. Yeah. Why is the weather? so screwed up you see on the news so it's you're everywhere on, your argument is obviously dad, jets, dad, dad sort jets. of believes yeah about the whole the, the chemtrails and things like that yeah coming out the, the planes and changing the weather essentially which i'm sure it obviously does i'm have sure it does but but you shouldn't have done because but, yeah there, there was barely any planes there's hardly anything flying and we were driving less so i don't know why i thought the weather would be really calm and stabilized and there's just more cloud and more moisture around everywhere we have had a shocker really for, for cloud this summer couple of weeks that's all we've had we, we've got summer. solid we looked at the weather today we've got easily five days <laughs> solid of cloud blanket cloud we call yeah it, and yeah. it's quite depressing it is yeah i'm a yeah. firm believer of the um seasonal affective disorder sad it's called yeah. Yeah. where everyone kind of feels sad and down because of the weather being gray and things like that and gray skies low pressure and i do think that there is 100 percent a link to your your mentality your mood yeah, mood. Your, mood, your mood, your mood yeah. Yeah. and and the weather so yeah, that, so you're throwing that out to them. What do those guys yeah, think? I don't understand it. I, th I thought it would be really calm, really nice, some nice blue skies. And when you look around the world, obviously you guys watch it from all around the world, there's fires, there's rains, there's everything it seems to have, to me, has got worse. But it's got worse <laughs> since the planes stopped flying and we stopped driving around as much. I don't get that. I can't work that one Maybe out. Maybe we're too far gone. Maybe it's already the We're world. over the, the edge. edge. Yeah, the ozone. My stomach could be over the edge with that pancetta. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was sitting cross-legged. <laughs> anyway, cheers for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, gl glad to have you back here at the camp with us. And we're going to we're going to be doing a lot more videos over the next couple of months. Certainly some fishing. We're thinking of doing some more kind of catch and cooks as well. Bring catching the fish, bringing them back to the camp here, yeah. or maybe catching them cooking and the cook, cooking them where we catch them. All that sort of stuff. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, thank you for watching. Really do appreciate it. And I'll catch up with you guys in the next episode.